It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Let's move to KP's question. Morning. I have a total of 400K, 400K invested in a 401K, a Roth, and rollover IRAs and personal accounts. So that's 400K across all those accounts. About 50% of the value is in a single stock, Ooh. but not by design. It's the growth of the stock that has done that. Mm, he bought Should a good one. I diversify? So let me uh, put on my compliance hat here. Obviously, we can't give you specific advice. We can't answer specific financial related questions because we don't know you. We don't know your unique circumstances. We don't know your tax circumstances. There's a lot of variables that we can't specifically speak to. So we cannot answer the question, should you diversify out of the stock? However, what I think we can talk about is in our experience, when we've seen over concentration, what are some risks that are associated with that? And what are some potential ways that we've helped clients uh, diversify some of that over concentration that exists in their portfolio? Yeah, I mean, I had two big things just jump in my head. The first, I'll share that, you know, Bo and I are originally from Atlanta and the Second firm I worked at before I started my, my first company um, was we worked with Lucent executives. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of you who are, you know, under 30, you're like, Lucent, what the heck is that? And I want you guys to know, if you go look historically, Lucent was no different than the, the Cisco's or some of the other household. High, I mean, you could probably even say it wasn't a, a, to the level of a Google, but it might be the level of like a Microsoft sure, or yeah. something like that on household names of what people understood in the tech sector and how things were going um, in, in the S&P 500. And Lucent is to be – no one knows of it anymore. Mm, and, no. and the problem is that these executives all were, were very optimistic about the future mm -hmm. They thought things were going to be great, had a lot of their wealth concentrated in this, and I watched it. No matter what we told them, a lot of them rode this thing down to where they were no longer as wealthy as they thought they sure. were. Um, the other thing I think about is I, I haven't, I've been very transparent about this. I hit a lick with Tesla. Mm -hmm. You know, I bought my, I got my first Tesla in 2018 with the Model Three, and I was like, "Whew, this car's awesome. awesome! I like this car." And I'm, you know, and I. It was one of those things I was like, I don't buy individual stocks, but I feel like I ought to go buy this stock because I really love the product. And it's and it's been a lick. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, it's one of those that you're like, Woo, this, this is incredible, the journey and ride it's been. But I'm blessed in the fact that it's still less than definitely 10% of mm -hmm. the total net worth. And that's the part where I want you to be very careful. I want you to combine those two things and think about, okay, where is the teachable thing that I can apply? Because we can't give you specific advice, as Bo is already giving you the disclaimer on. But you can ask yourself, is this a lucent situation where, as you said, you have 50% of your investable assets in it? That gives me a little pause. How do we try to get this thing to where it's digestible if it went down like mm -hmm. Lucent did? Because, look, nobody knows if Tesla is going to crush it forever. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, but I have to know that this stock could, could you know, lose a ton of its market value tomorrow, but that's not going to derail my walk towards financial independence. And I want you, KP, to also use those type of, of thought processes to figure out, am I overly concentrated? Because if I, I don't, I really five to ten percent, and that ten percent is on the aggressive sure. side of it. Because especially if you're one of these people that works at this company, also because I'm always amazed at people. Because I just told you I hit a lick with an investment. A lot of people, just like the Lucent executives, not only have their investment capital with these high flying companies, they have their working capital. So if you have both your work life as well as your investment life all tied up in one company. That's that's a little bit scary. But the truth is, when it whether you work there or not, stocks are an emotional game. When you buy one and it's a loser, it's emotional, and maybe even more so when you buy one and it's a winner, it's emotional. So the question becomes: If I determine that this concentration does not make sense in my financial life, well, what do I do? How do I, do I just sell it tomorrow? Well, what if the stock is down because everything else is, or you know, but why don't I just wait for a little bit for it to recover? Whenever I find myself in an emotional place when it comes to investing, I like to figure out, okay, is there a way that I can remove some of the emotion from the decision-making process? So you hear us all the time talk about when we're introducing dollars into the market, like maybe you have an inheritance or you sold a business or you got a big bonus, 
there's nothing wrong with dollar cost averaging. I just want to ease it into the market over time. So that way I'm not going to be 100% right, but I'm going to protect myself from being 100% wrong on how I do the timing here. When it comes to diversifying or removing risk from your portfolio, you can actually do the exact same thing. So you said right now it's 50% of your portfolio. There's nothing crazy to think about. Okay, if I want to decrease this risk, I don't need to just sell it all tomorrow. Perhaps I'll sell this much every month or this much every quarter, and I'll put together a systematic strategy that whether the stock is going up or down, I'm slowly moving out of it. If it goes up, great, my current holdings are making more money. If it goes down, okay, great, I sold some last quarter, I'm getting out at a good time. And so that way you don't struggle with all the emotion that can often be tied up in. Oh man, I hit this one really big, I hit this one really strong. I think if you can do that, you're gonna be more likely to set yourself up for success because I, we've heard this too many times. Someone did the thing, they bought the stock and it blew up and they were like, no, this one I'm doing, or, or we saw this recently with like cryptos. We've seen like people that were on paper multi-millionaires on cryptocurrencies and then the walls came crumbling down and it all imploded and they're sitting there thinking, oh man, all, all that wealth that I had, had evaporated. Man, what if I could have cashed out on that? What if, you know, if, if you win the lottery ticket, most people go cash out the big win. They don't try to like roll it completely back in. You have to Think about it that way as you approach those decisions. I, I would also, because I, I, I think everything there was great, but also, Bo, something you just said hit. You and I had a conversation, and I've known a few people that hit the big lick. Mm -hmm. But then, and it was such a big portion of their net worth that when it goes down, if it goes down, it haunts them. Yep. And that's Absolutely. something that I think about all the time. It's just like, because I, I have some people, I'm not going to get because they might be too close to me. Um, I don't know I'm talking about them. <laughs> but um, I have people tell me stories over and over and over again. You're like, man, that must hurt mm -hmm. for this person to forget that they've shared this story with me four times yep. about they had the big one. They had made it all. If they had just sold a portion of it, they could be on easy street right now. That, that's scary. Yep. I mean, that's sad. It, it, because, I mean, that's somebody, it, it really, the haunting is the right word on that, mm -hmm. is that if you have created success, you've created enough money. It, it, remember, there's two parts of this journey. There's creating wealth, but then there's also keeping mm -hmm. wealth. You better think about those two components. Because a lot of us always focus on the maximization. We, we spend a lot of head time on maximization. Sure. But I want people, and this is why we always talk about taking a relationship to the next level, Part of our job as financial advisors is making sure that we help you also keep the wealth. Right. So, so balance those two goals because they are not completely the same.